Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now the details of the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 have recently been released and we can see that the new Snapdragon will be using a semi-custom ARM core called the Cryo 280. Now it's built using a new licensing agreement with ARM called Built on Cortex Technology. So what is Built on Cortex Technology? Why are Qualcomm using it and what does it mean for ARM? Well, let me explain. Okay, first just a quick refresher. Up until now, ARM have had two types of major license. One is the Cortex license, which allows a company like Qualcomm or Samsung or MediaTek to take ARM's IP, intellectual property, that means a CPU core, and use it unchanged, unmodified, as is in a product. So they might take the Cortex A72 core and put it inside of a CPU. Now, they also had a thing called the architectural license, which allows a company like Qualcomm, Samsung, and Apple to design ARM compatible cores using their own engineers, a complete clean room design that has no reference to existing Cortex designs from ARM. Now, Qualcomm has an architectural license and they used it in the Snapdragon 820 and the 821. However, for the Snapdragon 835, it's taken a different route and that's to use a new license agreement from ARM called Built on Cortex Technology. And what that basically allows someone like Qualcomm to do is to take an ARM core, maybe the Cortex A73, and then modify it slightly, change it, tweak it to their own particular needs, and then brand it under their own branding, in this case, the Cryo branding, but just recognize along the way that it's built on Cortex, ARM Cortex technology. Now, what is this kind of tweaking that they can do? Well, a CPU is obviously a very complicated piece of equipment, and there are lots of things going on on the inside. There are lots of bits that make up the CPU, including things like a branch predictor uh, for out of order instruction execution. There's a thing called an instruction window. Now, if we take the instruction window as an example, that basically means how many instructions ahead the CPU can look to find another instruction that it can execute in parallel with which is okay, which won't affect other instructions that are going on. And the bigger that instruction window, the more further ahead it can look to find instructions to execute in parallel. But obviously the bigger that window, the more resources the CPU needs in terms of internal buffering, in terms of copies of the register banks, in terms of just remembering the state of everything that's going on, it needs more, and more means more silicon, and silicon is costly, and it also means more power. And it also means that actually the frequency uh, targets might not be met because it's difficult to juggle all that stuff going on and still hammer on at 2, 2.5, 2.8 gigahertz. So basically when ARM design a CPU, they, they make a decision about the frequency, about the silicon size, about the things like the instruction windows, the branch predictors, a whole bunch of other things and say, this is our target, this is what we're gonna make, and this is what we're gonna do. Now then someone like Qualcomm comes along and says, that's brilliant, we like that, but we wanna tweak it so that maybe the instruction window is bigger, maybe there's some things we can do with the branch predictor, there's some things we can do with other parts of internals that don't break the design, they don't change the design, but they just change it in a subtle way, tweaking, kind of adding on bits. Because they might say, well actually we're prepared to pay for more silicon, we're prepared to spend the time to get that frequency target uh, just right, even though we've made it a more complicated CPU. So the way it works is that Qualcomm will take a core design from ARM and then its engineers will then tweak it in partnership with ARM to produce the CPU that they want. And then they can brand it under their own branding. So up until now, when a chip maker took a core from ARM, it had three ways in which it could kind of integrate that core. One is, of course, it could choose how many cores it wanted to use and in what combination. So maybe they wanted a quad core or a or a hexacore or an octacore, maybe they wanted to combine it with some big cores and some little cores, and they had that choice to make all those different things. And Qualcomm have chips just like that in their 400 series and their 600 series. They've taken ARM's IP and they've built six core chips, they've built quad core chips, and they've built them however they wanted to. The second thing, of course, that the chip maker can choose is the physical layout. They can choose to have it on 28 nanometers or on 10 nanometers or 16 nanometers. And that has uh, repercussions in terms of development costs, in terms of manufacturing costs, in terms of die size. And the third thing they could do up until now is they could mix and match which components they added it with. So if they were an all arm shop, maybe like MediaTek, 
then they could take the GPU from ARM, the ARM Mali, they could take the interconnect bits of silicon, they could take the display driver, they could take the video uh, chip, and they could combine them all together. But in Qualcomm's case, they combine it with their own GPU, for example, so and their own uh, modems and their own DSP. So we know that Qualcomm are already mix and matching. So that's three different things. So they could choose how many cores, they could choose the physical uh, attributes of it, and they could choose what they combined it with. Now, there's a fourth dimension, now a fourth axis with built on core technology, which means they can take the CPU core and they can also tweak that. They can change it, they can fiddle with some of the parameters to get a different performance characteristics according to the needs of that particular OEM. And the great thing is that those tweaks, those changes remain only for that company. They don't get them passed on to Samsung or to MediaTek. They just belong to Qualcomm and it's its own special variant of that core that they took from ARM. And so what we're seeing with the Snapdragon 835 is you've got Qualcomm's own technology, like it's a GPU and it's DSPs and it's image processors, and then they've taken a CPU core from ARM and they've modified it to be their own special custom variation of that core, which will only be inside of the Snapdragon chips. Now that is then called the Cryo 280, and my thinking is it's Cryo 2, second generation Cryo, and it's got eight cores, so it's the Cryo 280, and maybe we'll see a Cryo 260, a Cryo 240, and maybe next year we might see the Cryo Cryo 340 or the Cryo 380. This is just speculation on my part, but that seems to be where the naming is coming from. So the reason Qualcomm are doing this of course is because it's cheaper for them. Arm do all the heavy lifting, they get a CPU design up and running, and then Qualcomm's engineers take that off them and then they can modify it to bring it up to their particular set of specifications. And it also means it's quicker because ARM are already developing chips. They've just announced the A73, that's probably what this one is based on, and they're sure they've got other chips in the pipeline that they're working on now, and they don't need to, uh, Qualcomm don't need to have engineers doing that, ARM are doing that for them, and they can use their engineers to concentrate on the DSPs and the ISPs and the interconnects and the GPU and tweaking the CPU core and then combining it all together to be the system on a chip that is the Snapdragon 835. So the result should be a high performance and highly efficient uh, system on a chip because you've got uh, Qualcomm's GPU technology which is excellent, you've got their other stuff like their DSPs and their image processors and then you've got this custom version of a Cortex core and then that should really be a great chip for 2017 and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in some devices and seeing what this chip can do. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd also like to give a big shout out to Robert Triggs, my colleague here at Android Authority. He wrote a great article about this subject, which you can find over at the androidauthority.com website. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our app because that will give you access to all of our news and features directly on your mobile phone. And last but not least, don't forget to go always to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. Thank <laughs> you.